Ronda Rousey blasts Vince McMahon and WWE culture. Plus, Tony Khan comments on Jack Perry's New Japan run and new champions were crowned on AEW Dynamite. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. In her upcoming book, Our Fight, Ronda Rousey has blasted Vince McMahon, two WWE executives and WWE culture. Several paragraphs from the fourth coming book were were revealed yesterday online as well as some pointed words about the writing of the book from Rhonda herself which we will get to but let's start with some of the the paragraphs some of the the excerpts from the book that we saw yesterday yes yeah, so she describes the McMahon chain of power within WWE during her run and she described Vince as an Emperor Palpatine type figure she adds to that she says it's hard sometimes to know where the evil unethical slimeball character of Vince McMahon played out for the camera ends and the actual questionably ethical many times sued and multiple times accused of mi uh, sexual misconduct Vince McMahon begins that blurred line between character and reality is a recurring theme within the WWE universe she then added that pay-per-views for WWE are held in major cities like New York Los Angeles and Philadelphia as well as now twice a year in Saudi Arabia a nation that restricts the rights of women in a way that I'm certain Vince McMahon wishes he could. Yes, Rousey later criticised WWE's treatment of women during the company's history as well. She says, WWE loves to do well-produced video segments about the legacy of women within the organisation, but the truth is, women have largely been footnotes. For the longest time, they were relegated to serving male characters in a valet role, an overly sexualised supporting character that takes cheap shots when the ref isn't looking. Over time, as the level of female talent grew and society as a whole started to shift, the organisation grew gradually expanded the role of female wrestlers. WWE builds itself as a sports entertainment organization, and just like in the mainstream entertainment industry, there was, by all accounts, a casting couch culture where men backstage in powerful positions pressured female talent for favors in return for airtime there were so many public accusations and scandals it's hard to keep track and more that i am sure the wwe managed to sweep under the rug Women weren't just being demeaned backstage, but center stage. Up until 2007, bra and panties matches where female wrestlers won the match by stripping their opponent down to her underwear were an actual effing thing. Even after that gimmick was retired by WWE executives, I'm sure very reluctantly, and with a lot of lamenting about political correctness, it was still clear that the organization placed more value on a woman's physical appearance than her physical ability. The Divas era with its pink rhinestone butterfly title belt dawned around the same time. Women, while now portrayed as wrestlers, were still expected to look a certain way. I think lots of makeup, little clothing, and huge boobs. It would take almost another decade, years after I proved women could be a huge combat sports attraction, before women truly started to get time in the squared circle. Presented this information as a person outside of the wrestling world, you might draw the conclusion that there is a troubling foundational sexist patriarchal culture within WWE. You would be right. I have nothing but respect for the female wrestlers who paved the way for women wrestling today and nothing but disgust for the amount of sexist, degrading, bull SH1T they were put through. Yeah, now following the release of these excerpts, Ronda Rousey posted an interview alongside her sister and co-author of the book, Maria Burns Ortiz. She was asked about what people would be most surprised to read about in her new book and Rousey responded, how much of an absolute SH1T show it all is at the WWE. They can't hold a sword over my head and hold me hostage with my own career. I don't need anything from them and I don't intend on going back. I can say everything I think and feel where everyone else that is held captive by their organization can not. During the interview, she mentions Bruce Pritchard and John Laurinaitis by name, saying they can go F themselves. I was going to talk so much more about them, especially about John Laurinaitis and Bruce Pritchard, but our editor said we have to streamline everything and not take a detour on the F these old bastards quest. I think that last one is YouTube safe. We'll yes. find out in time. <laughs> uh, so those are some excerpts from the book 
book and a bit of an interview that Ronda Rousey has done about the book as well. Uh, they're expected to be fireworks when Ronda finally put pen to paper, somebody who is, has no intentions on going back to WWE, very much speaking about everything that is happening within that system right now. Yes. Um, I, I'm intrigued to read the book. Yeah, me too. Uh, mm. Especially if there's more to it. And that's... that's perhaps just even just a little bit of what she has to say about WWE there. So I am really interested to see what comes out as well from the book. I'm sure there'll be lots of things. She doesn't hold back, does she? Not in the slightest. Uh, let's move on to AEW. So we talked a little bit about uh, Tony Khan this week. Yes. And, and how he is, uh, according to reports, really mad still at Jack Perry for costing him CM Punk. Well, mm -hmm. comicbook.com spoke to Tony Khan and asked about Jack Perry's current work. Uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling and his scapegoat character that he's building there. And Tony Khan said, I think you got to stay tuned. Jack's doing great things in New Japan. The New Japan Cup, he's had a great run. He's established himself over there. He feels like he is the scapegoat, but he's doing great things. And he's wrestling for a great promotion. And it's been great tracking Jack's progress in New Japan. And I think he's done excellent work there. I thought Ooh. he was going to say great again. Great. No. Me off. Uh, I am... I mean, have you been enjoying Jack Perry's stuff in New Japan? I certainly I like, have. I like the look. I like the look a lot, and I think his promos have, have really improved as well. It feels like when the heel turn happened within AEW, I, uh, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was all right, but I agree with most people in saying that it was still just missing a little bit of something, and I feel like he's starting to find that in New Japan now. And uh, it's the, the Jack Perry I feel like we've wanted to see for a while at this point, too. Um, I believe he's in a tag match at... Uh, Sakura Genesis in April that has John Moxley as part of that as well. So perhaps we start doing the stuff that ties him uh, back to AEW, maybe. This opens the multiverse Yeah, a bit. yeah, if we do the, the Forbidden Door stuff and maybe Jack comes <laughs> back for that or whatever, uh, remains to be seen. But um, I'm excited to see where he takes this character and, and what he does with it as well to push him to that next level that I think a lot of us wanted to see him at. I think it's a good chance to go away and, and, and learn a new discipline mm. and maybe you'd argue some discipline as part of New Japan Pro Wrestling and, and sort of hone your craft on that scene there with an opportunity, which is one we'll keep an eye on. Uh, we watched Dynamite last night and we saw some new champions crowned, didn't we, Andrew? We certainly did. We saw two titles change on last, ne uh, last night. Sorry, last, eight, neat. last night's day. You know, mate. Last night's dynamite. Sorry, Fra Fraser. <laughs> uh, and it was you are as, well Scottish. <laughs> well Scottish. Which was uh, it was essentially a three-hour show yesterday due to Rampage following immediately afterwards as well. So Kazuchika Okada defeated Eddie Kingston to become the AEW Continental Champion, becoming the second ever person to hold that title. Um, however, the stuff it's the stuff afterwards that gets me excited. We got a stare down between Okada and Pac setting up. Mm -hmm. A match between the two in the future, which, oh my goodness, that's going to be amazing. I am up for that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still very angry, according to some people online, that Okada <laughs> has joined AEW. I wanted him in Chase U. Gosh darn it. But they've given him a belt to make me feel better. I guess that's fine. No, great, great choice to put a belt on Okada, nigh on immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that is it then for the Triple Crown stuff. I it assume. is now. On uh, dis it's now disputed. Yes, it is, <laughs> I guess it is now disputed. Not, it's, now, it's no longer unified. And because Kingston is also defending just the Ring of Honor title separately as well, isn't he too? So there you go. Also, there I, you en go. I enjoyed and and I loved it how Okada was genuinely quite surprised that he got pyro at the end of the match. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lovely moment. It was really he nice. He held the belt up and the fireworks went off, and Okada went oh, <laughs> like someone was doing a run in. But then. <laughs> Oh, oh, that was good. I enjoyed it a lot. It wasn't the only title change, though, was it? It sure wasn't, because in the main event, we had Adam Copeland uh, going up against Christian Cage in an I Quit match for the AEW TNT Championship. And the finish came when Cage got blasted in the balls by Spike, and it made a tremendous sound as well. Oh, uh, God. And so Christian Cage is handcuffed in the corner, gets hit in the balls with Spike. Uh, Adam Copeland then goes to hit him again, seemingly in the head, and that is when when Christian Cage says, I quit. And uh, we there we crown a new TNT champion. He absolutely wallops him. Proofed him in the he bollocks. He really did. Oh, he really did. Oh my God, his grandchildren will feel it. <laughs> but I, I don't know whether 
And, and I really want to think it's, it's the latter rather than the former. I don't know whether there was a timing issue or whether it was a deliberate plan to keep people to watching Rampage mm. because as he got hoofed in the balls by Spike, the custom two by four, it faded to black. Yes, yeah. And then, and then Rampage started. Yeah. And then, so the finish of that match was the first couple of seconds of Rampage. That's a, I think that's a really good idea. I, I, I want to think it was a deliberately planned move yeah. to keep people watching for Rampage. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a nightmare if they ever put the dynamite on a network. <laughs> what happened at the end? I'm going to no find the corresponding Rampage now. <laughs> the end of the story for, for Adam Copeland, absolutely uh, the right person to win that match, yeah. I think. It was uh, a really fun match really as well. Really like, good as I, well. I, like, you know, the I Quit match is definitely one of those matches where things get a little bit brutal and it was brutal absolutely but it also felt like I know there was a lot of violence in there but it felt like two best friends just having a tremendous time with one another <laughs> like it, it looked a lot of fun they looked like they were having a lot of fun in that they match they had a lot of fun <laughs> and a new champion was crowned as well talking of finishing the story uh, Roads to Wrestlemania is our brand new Cultaholic retrospective podcast uh, for the next four weeks we are deep diving into the story of Cody Rhodes last week on the podcast feed you heard the story of Cody's first WWE run and on Sunday we go into the wilderness years the wilderness the, years the time that was spent outside of WWE wow. including Ring of Honor New Japan a little cheeky run in TNA we get Jack the Jobber in to talk about his time in WCPW we've Sounds got some good. lovely stories from that but it's all about how Cody carves out this new version of himself ahead of an all elite changing of the guard but I like it we'll get in that on Sunday on the podcast feed uh, part two of Roads to Wrestlemania you can listen to part one Right now, anything you want to plug? I got nothing to plug other than that when you said he goes out into the wilderness, I imagined Cody Rhodes leaves Pallet Town, which is WWE, <laughs> and goes into Route One in Pokemon, and that's the wilderness. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> That's a lovely image, that is. There you go. I want to leave you with that image. And the, and of course, when we have more wrestling news throughout the day, you can check out. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I call Alec Dad, blah, blah, blah. Ain't <laughs> <laughs>